The Baltimore Ravens face off against the Denver Broncos in week nine. We talk about keys to victory, key storylines, and so much more on this game day edition episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire, here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here today on this game day, making Locked On Ravens both a part of your day and your first listen each and every single day. We're free and available for you, all podcasting and platforms that includes in video form on YouTube, where you can like and subscribe to the channel. Also, in audio form, you can follow along. And subscribe to the show over there wherever you get your podcast. We're five days a week plus more daily Ravens covers, and it is the same show, both audio and video form. Today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Happy Sunday, happy game day. We are getting ready for the Ravens mashing up with the Denver Broncos. In week nine, so as we do on Sundays for our game day episodes, we'll be talking about what to expect from this game, how the Ravens match up with Denver, both obviously Baltimore's offense versus Denver's defense, and vice versa with Denver's offense versus Baltimore's defense. So a lot to dive into with that, but also I'm going to be diving into some key storylines, keys to victory, and a lot more here. So let's start off with Baltimore's offense against Denver's defense. That to me, I think is the matchup that everybody should be watching because you have Lamar Jackson, who is going to play in this game, according to everybody here and Lamar himself, right? We talked about that on yesterday's bonus episode, but Lamar versus that Denver defense is I think going to be an exquisite, yeah, I said an exquisite matchup between a high-powered offense, the best offense in the league, versus a high-powered defense, which is obviously the top defense in the league. So you have powerhouse versus powerhouse, unstoppable force versus a movable object, everything and anything that you could want out of you know one side of the ball versus the other side of the ball, Baltimore and Denver are going to give that to you here. Because look, Baltimore's offense is the top passing offense. They are the top rushing offense both yards per attempt, you know, yards, whatever you want to say. For the passing offense in particular, they have 8.1 net yards per attempt, which again, tops in the league, rushing 6.2 yards per attempt. But we cannot sleep on that Denver defense. They have the best passing defense in the league with giving up just 4.7 yards per attempt. And on the rushing side of things, they're number five, giving up just four yards per attempt. Now, I would probably say... If I had to guess, Baltimore's rushing offense will be able to come out on top over Denver's rushing defense. That's just the hunch I have with obviously Derrick Henry having the year he is having this year, Lamar Jackson and the threat with his legs. Now in the passing game, I mean, look, you can't sleep on this Denver secondary at all. You can't do it. Pat Sertan has been great. Riley Moss, they love him over there. They have a bunch of talent, the secondary members. But the thing that I'm so intrigued about here with this matchup is now it's not just Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman, and that's what they got in the wide receiver room. Obviously, Deontay Johnson expected to play, I think, in this game, and we're not going to really know. I'm recording this, obviously, before inactives come out. But I would anticipate Deontay Johnson plays. How much? I don't know the answer to that, obviously. But I think it's just a really good wide receiver versus corner matchup. And then you also throw in Mark Andrews, you throw in Isaiah Likely. But how does Todd Munkin utilize all these weapons? And Lamar Jackson's done a great job at spreading the ball around this season. But what does that look like? I think the big thing for me is you can't leave points out on the board against this Denver defense. Now, the Denver offense, which we'll obviously get to in the second part of the show, you know, they don't scare me as much. And sure, they have talented playmakers, don't get me wrong. But against this Denver defense, you're not going to get a ton of opportunities, right? Baltimore could go out there and put it to the top defense in the league. We've seen that plenty of times, and it wouldn't shock me if they did. But part of it is their offensive inconsistency, particularly with play calling, is alarming because we've seen – Lamar go out there and do his thing, put the Superman cape on. We've seen Derrick Henry do the same thing. 
But then we obviously go back to week eight against Cleveland when it was just too cute from Todd Munkin. And that is when momentum shifted. Really, it was early in the game, right? On that Derrick Henry fourth and one play that did not come to fruition for the Ravens. The Ravens go down to score a touchdown there. You could argue that could have changed the entire complexion of what that game looks like for the full 60 minutes. And you, you can't do that. Even if you get three in that situation, it's a little different, right? I mean, technically, if you want to play the game of just putting tacking the points on the board, they'd be down two, right? Because they lost the game by five. They'd be down two late instead of down by five late. And if Tuck, Tucker hits that field goal, then they're up by one. So again, Mistakes happen, but the Ravens just had so many in week eight and have had so many over the course of this season. It's been tough to establish some level of a rhythm, but Lamar Jackson does a great job of doing that. And I think what this Ravens team should try to do is tire this Denver defense out by, you know, and again, you'll take drives as they come to you. You know, you don't like you in this Ravens team with this Ravens offense, you don't you don't orchestrate like, okay, we're going to hold the ball for seven minutes and 35 seconds, right? You take the drives that comes to you, but if you can tire that Denver defense out and on the other side, I think Baltimore's defense can help out Baltimore's offense with that. You are able to convert on your early downs as well as third down and fourth down conversions. Baltimore was abysmal in week eight, just two of 10 on third down. And then you have obviously fourth down. I think it was over two, right? Yeah, they were over two on fourth down. You can't have that. You got to convert second and three is a lot better than second and nine. Got to put yourself in those situations. And honestly, it was, it's been so crazy because with those second and longs, third and longs, I don't even sweat them as much as I used to anymore because it feels like Lamar has been really good about those, but obviously the numbers in that Cleveland game, what you saw will tell you the opposite. So to me, it's about, making sure that you can keep Lamar upright as well, right? This offensive line struggled against Cleveland's front seven, but now you have a Denver defense that has guys like Zach Allen coming in with four sacks. Jonathan Cooper comes in with five and a half sacks. John Franklin Myers on the interior has been great. He has three sacks. Justin Snad, he has three sacks as well. So you have to be wary of this Broncos pass rush because they have guys that can get after the quarterback, and while they don't have a Miles Garrett on their roster, doesn't matter. Does not matter. Got to keep Lamar upright. He can escape. He can make magic happen. We know that, and he'll certainly do it. He does it every week. But let him sit back there, go through his reads, no pressure. Don't let him feel like he has to bolt. Don't make him feel like he has to be looking over his shoulder. That, to me, Lamar can do it, obviously. But he's so much more dangerous when you can keep him in that pocket and throw the ball. And obviously, when he gets outside the pocket, he is dangerous as well. So really good offensive versus defensive matchup there. But there's another one to talk about. Obviously, Denver's offense versus Baltimore's defense. Stay tuned. Plan to get to on this game day edition of Lockdown Ravens. First, this show is brought to you by Game Time. The hype and the atmosphere of watching basketball live is great. You got celebrity sightings, the sound from the court and the feel of the crowd. For me being a Denver Nuggets guy, I love when the Nuggets are in the D.C. area going down, seeing them play there. And I look forward to doing that a bunch. And Game Time has a new feature now called Game Time Picks. It's getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Plus, Game Time has tickets for all events, concerts, shows, and more, not just sports. Game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. So for this Ravens and Broncos game here, obviously, game time picks, you can browse through the seats over there. They got super deals and other tiers of deals, plus the app has so many great features such as those game time picks. You got seat views, lowest price guarantee, game time ticket coverage, and so much more. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks. Download the game time app, create an account, use code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Turns apply again, create an account, redeem code locked on NFL, spelled L O C K E D one NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. And the show is brought to you by Five Hour Energy. Our friends over at Five Hour Energy know that being a passionate football fan isn't just a hobby, it's a way of life. It takes a lot of energy to power through all day tailgates, touchdown celebrations, or an agonizing second overtime, which is why they've created the Stand the Fan Five Hour Energy Shot with a special flavor called Fan Fuel. The energy shot made just for super fans like you, the fans who are first in the parking lot and who are last to leave. We see you. And you know, it gave me a bit of Ravens fan fuel this week. At the moment when the Ravens traded for Deontay Johnson, I thought it was a great move. And 
definitely pumps me up when the Ravens make trades. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a whole lot of energy. Whether you're prepping for the big tailgate or ironing your jersey, your game day to do list is always a mile long. That's why a limited edition stand the fan five hour energy shot is here to help keep you fueled throughout the season. What's your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, do it with a five hour energy available on fivehourenergy.com. It ships nationwide. We're back for our second segment, Locked on Ravens. Kevin Allstriker still here on this game day edition here in week nine. Ravens facing off against the Denver Broncos. Appreciate everybody for being here today and making Locked on Ravens again, both your first listen of the day and a part of your day in general. Be sure to like and subscribe in video form and subscribe, follow along in audio form as well. On the video side of things, we just hit 9,000 subscribers going for 10. Really appreciate the support. And also in audio form, the show is continuing to grow. That community is continuing to grow as well. So word of mouth, tell a friend, tell a family member that we are here for obviously you and for them five days per week, plus more with daily Ravens coverage. Now we talked about the Ravens offense versus the Broncos defense. Let's flip the field. Let's talk about Denver's offense versus Baltimore's defense. To me, Bo Nix is a player that I think has a lot of potential. I think he's shown a lot of good things this season. But to me, his highs are very high and his lows are very low. And you have to be able to rattle Bo Nix early. Historically, under John Harbaugh, rookie quarterbacks, second-year quarterbacks, guys that are playing the Ravens' defense for the first time, it has been a struggle because of the exoticness of the defense, the looks that they can throw at you. And I would hope, and honestly – it's tough to expect it with the way the secondary is playing, but I think the fact that it is a rookie quarterback gives me more confidence in it. But you have to be able to do that because we saw him. Look, Jameis is no rookie, obviously, over there in Cleveland, right? He's a vet. But you can't let him get going. We said that all week last week with Jameis. You can't get him going, and they did. And they allowed him to feel himself, and obviously the secondary was not great. They were playing down both Marlon and, and Nate Wiggins. And by the way, we do have some – Semi breaking news on Marlon Humphrey as I record this late Saturday night, early Sunday morning in Rappaport of NFL Network reporting that Marlon is expected to go. He's going to be expected to play in this game, but there's a little catch here. Apparently, he will likely be on a pitch count, but he should be going. So how big is that pitch count? I do not know. But good thing for Marlon that, and good thing for the Ravens, obviously, that he is expected to be out there because they need him. Now, the Broncos have Cortland Sutton. He's their top number one guy. They traded away Jerry Judy, who they saw last week with the Cleveland Browns. But to me, it's like, okay, stop Cortland Sutton. Make someone else beat you. That is my thing because other than Cortland Sutton, the guys that they have to throw the ball to – it's Troy Franklin. We got, you know, Marvin Mims, Lil Jordan Humphrey, Adam Troutman, who has played good tight end for them this season. But, you know, it's th- those are guys that you need to be able to stop. They use Javante Williams out of the backfield a lot. So if you can stop Javante, who, by the way, has had an up and down season himself, the Ravens, again, their pass defense has been terrible. Their run defense, on the other hand, has been very good. So, you can stop Javante, take away that aspect. We say this every single week here. If you can just take away that aspect of Denver's offense, it can help. Now, for Baltimore, it's not just a secondary because, look, we talked about that. Marcus Williams, you know, he'll be playing in this game, John Harbaugh said. So we're going to see how that looks. That unit just needs to gel, right? A lot of bad plays. They've been on the jugs machines all week, apparently. So hopefully that I know if. You know, the Ravens catch an interception today. All the city of Baltimore is going to rejoice based off of uh, of how that has gone for the team so far this season. A lot of draft. I believe they lead the league with eight or 10 or 12. I don't remember the exact number, but they do lead the league in dropped interceptions this season, which just uh, it cannot happen. But the pass rush also needs to show something today. Denver's offensive line. They have some good players on there, including one former Raven, Ben Powers, who we talked with Sarah Benger of Locked On Broncos on Thursday for Crossover Thursday, and he said that Ben Powers has done a really good job over there in Denver. So 
Got to have guys like Kyle Van Noy get back on track after his strong start in the season. Adafi Owe doing his thing, right? I think you need to see more from him here. You know, you got guys like Yannick Ngakwe. But this game, to me, there have been reports and rumblings that the Ravens have been looking at pass rushers, and rightfully so. But this game, obviously, I think could seal the deal here. If they don't get anything pass rush-wise, and Bo Nix has all day to throw back there in the pocket, and they're not really challenging him there, Denver's offensive line kind of has their way, I'd, I'd expect somebody in by Tuesday. I'd expect somebody in. Plus, but it's not just the outside linebackers, right? The interior has to be better, too. So you got guys like Travis Jones, Broderick Washington, all these guys are turning to practice. Obviously, Michael Pierce is on IR. Brent Urban has a concussion, so he's down in this one. But how healthy really is Travis Jones? Ravens elevated both Chris Warmly, so a little blast from the past there with Chris Warmly, but got both him and Josh Tuopo, who have been called up from the practice squad to play in this game. They're going to need guys to step up because teams are taking Namdi Matabike out of the game plan. They don't want him game wrecking like he did last season. And teams have done a decently good job. I mean, Matabike is still good. I know I've seen some, some discourse about, you know, him not being good. He's still good. Teams are just game planning him out of the Ravens game plan. So it's had to be guys like Travis Jones, but Jones is clearly injured. I wouldn't play him this week personally. I mean, it's two two games in a span of four days. You know, we're you're really going to be cutting it close with some of these guys. You're obviously Keaton Mitchell not going to play in this game. He still needs about a week or two. But who is it going to be? Who, who's going to step up on the defensive line? You know, even for a guy like Roquan Smith and how he performs, that's a big storyline in this game. Because this Denver offense – Look, I don't expect them to go out there and score 30. I know some people might say they will because of the way the Ravens secondaries played this season. But if you allow them too much comfort, they will score points. They're, they're an NFL offense. Everybody in the NFL is an NFL offense, by the way, if you didn't know that. So to me, Zach Gore has to be on his P's and Q's. We know that. I know he's been getting a lot of blowback and opinions put out about him. But look, it, it's a tale of two stories here. It's both, where... Zach Orr needs to be better and the players need to be better. Zach Orr's not out there dropping interceptions and the players aren't out there calling the plays. I mean, obviously they can move guys around and there's certain things along those lines, but Zach Orr needs to be better because some of the situational awareness has been lacking. Play calling awareness has been lacking. And then for the players, you know, the execution hasn't been there. So you have to execute against this Denver team. And if we want to pull up the stats here, I mean, look, this Denver offense, you're, you're not looking at it and saying, oh, wow, this is a, this is a top five unit. You're not, you're not saying that. They do have a decently good rushing offense. They're 13th in the league in terms of yards per attempt with their rushing, but their passing offense is just 24th. Their passing offense is just 24th. So you have to be able to capitalize on that. This has to be a good bounce back game for the secondary because if not now, when? If not now, when is this team going to bounce back with a big game against Cincinnati coming up on Thursday? And obviously a divisional game, another one of those against Pittsburgh the week after that. We'll come up with the final part of the show. We'll talk about some keys to victory, final predictions, players to watch, and so much more. We'll be right back here on this ultimate game day edition of Locked on Ravens. First, the show is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get 100 in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, you like play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. We'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste the hunt to make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We're back. Our final segment, Locked on Ravens. Game day style. Kevin Oshiker is still here with you talking about this Ravens and Broncos week nine matchup. Hopefully everybody is enjoying their Sunday. If you're watching this before the game, obviously, as we preview this game, maybe you're getting ready to go to a tailgate or head down to the stadium. Maybe you're going to a friend's house or just setting up to watch the game in your own home. Thank you for tuning in today. And if you are watching this after the fact, maybe looking to see if my predictions were right or wrong, thank you for tuning in as well. We do five days a week here, of course, on Locked on Ravens, and we will be live later after the game. So 
win, lose, hopefully not a tie again. We do not, we do not like ties on Locked On Ravens. Be sure to tune in and watch whether the Ravens win or lose. We'll be diving into everything that happened in the Ravens and Broncos game. But let's get into some keys to victory, players to watch, predictions, and more. So let's start with the keys here. First, you got to wrestle Bo Nix early. We talked about that. Don't let Bo Nix get confident, right? He's a young quarterback, still learning. There can be some things you can throw at him. And I think you have to get creative here if you're Zach Orr and just execute at a high level for this defense. I think that's the thing people want to see the most. We know this offense for the Ravens is incredible. We know that they can hang with anybody on offense. But defensively, it just feels like, well, okay, the offense can put up 25 points, but that's a stretch in terms of if they can even win the game. So defensively would be awesome to have one of those like 10 point, 13 point performances against a very young quarterback in Bo Nix. Number two, just don't get cute with it. Again, we talked about this too. We saw Todd Munkin get too cute on Sunday in week eight with the fourth and one with Derrick Henry, the third and one with Charlie Kohler was running multiple different you know, tight end sweeps and end arounds and whatever. You don't have to do all that. You have Lamar Jackson. You have Derrick Henry. You don't have to overthink it. You just, you don't have to. You got two of the most generational players in NFL history on the same offense. You can use them, especially when third and one, fourth and ones, that's when they can do a ton of damage. So don't get cute. Use your personnel. And it will, I think, build a lot better for the team if they do that. And finally, capitalize on mistakes. Obviously, that involves Baltimore not making their own mistakes. But what I mean by this is like we saw against Cleveland and Gate. They did not capitalize on the mistakes that Cleveland made. They did at the end of the first half. That was it, though. There was really nothing else where just drop pick after drop pick. There were penalties. They have to be able to play a much smoother game than we saw them play in week number eight. And part of that is also like special teams wise, the last couple of seasons, special teams has not been great admittedly for this Ravens team. It's honestly been quite disappointing, especially because that's kind of what the Ravens hang their hat on. And you do have special teams penalties. John Harbaugh is clearly, clearly frustrated with what Chris Collier did in that game and taking the ball out of the end zone and all that kind of stuff. There was like some miscommunication. It seemed like on that. So just play a clean game, clean game, special teams wise. And I think that was, it will increase your chances a ton in this game. Now players to watch Daniel Falele is one. I'm definitely looking to look for in this game. The offensive line, as we talked about struggled against Cleveland and Denver has some good players on that defensive line. So can Daniel Falele bounce back? You know, he has been up and down for a lot of the season. He's had some really poor games and some really good games. Obviously, last week was a really poor game for him. And then the two safeties, obviously, we're watching Marcus Williams and everything that goes on with him in this game after he did not play in week number eight. So I, just from on-field perspective and off-field perspective, Marcus Williams certainly on my radar. Then you got Kyle Hamilton out there as well, who, look, was playing. he was playing the best on that defense up until that late critical draft interception. And look, Hamilton, that play, yes, he deserves every bit of criticism for it, every bit. But he was the best player on the defensive side of the ball for the Ravens on Sunday, even with that. And I think that's kind of telling with how critical and crucial that that play was. So I expect a full Cal Hamilton bounce back. You know, there's really nothing in my mind that, that says he won't. You can see he was super frustrated, disappointed with himself while the cameras were on him during the end of that game against Cleveland. So, yeah, to me – Kyle Hamilton bounce back. I'm, I'm booking that for me in that game for the Ramos. Now, final score prediction. I'm, I'm going 24-20. I said that on Friday's show, and I'm sticking with it here. Ravens win the game. I think it'll be close. Denver has the same record as Baltimore. Denver has outperformed almost every single expectation that has that was put upon them early in the season. Baltimore has a lot of expectations, right? Super Bowl, all this. Denver's is kind of like playing with house money a little bit. It's like, oh, well, you know, if they win, hey, that's awesome. If they lose, they're like, all right, you know, it's a learning year, but they're doing all this. They're playing so great in a quote-unquote learning year. But I do think that Baltimore comes out on top. I think the defense bounces back in a way 
and I'm going to go Ravens, get the job done. That's all I have for you here today on this game, Nate Edition of Locked On Ravens. Thank you so much again for tuning in to the show today. Be sure to, again, on the way out, hit that like and subscribe button, follow along, subscribe, video form, audio form. We have you covered five days a week plus more of daily Ravens coverage. Enjoy the game, and we'll see you right back here talking live after the fact. So be sure to stay tuned, and I'll see you right back here soon on Locked On Ravens.